that Miss Brown one, okay? And I don't mean no disrespect by your name or nothing like that. I'm going to get it right at some point, but I'm saying to you right now, okay? My eye is raised just a tad, okay? Now, I'm saying this because I like you, okay? I like your style. I like your personality. I like your, your, your sharp tongue. I like that, okay? You're interesting. You are, but I got my good eye just a little bit on you off some of them things that you said today in this episode, girl. We're going to get into it, okay? But I, I got Miss Brown, I got my, my good eye on you just a little bit. Just a little bit, okay? Not too much, but just a little, all right? Hey, y'all. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Belle, and this is The Belle Perspective, and we're here today to talk about The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. This is Season 5, Episode 2, Walking a Tightrope. Child, if you're new to my channel, I talk about reality TV, movies, books, TV shows, all sorts of things on this channel. So get in where you fit in by subscribing to the channel, okay? getting in the comment section and letting me know what you think about the episode and the commentary and also liking this video okay and don't forget to like this video before you leave here okay anyway let's get in to it okay so we are picking up with lisa and brownwin i'm gonna get that name wrong miss brownie miss brownwin no disrespect to her because i actually like her okay they're in the car she with her dog and lisa you know they recapping the night before at the Whitney and Lisa had and got into it. Now, I'm going to just pause right here real, real quick. I will quickly touch on the premiere episode later at the end of this video, just so we can keep up. Okay, so if you're interested in watching that, go ahead and wait to the end of the video and then we'll get into it there. Okay, so anyway, and just brief thoughts, girl. I ain't got time to be doing the whole, no whole, okay, dissertation. I can't, not today. So anyway, now, so they're talking and they recapping and Ron one says that she was laughing. Actually, this is before Heather. That's actually when Heather got into the car. So let me hold off on that. They're recapping. She basically is agreeing with Lisa. She says that you, what you said to Whitney was not wrong. Okay. Da, 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 da. Now mark that. Okay. Because later on, that's going to come back up. So she is agreeing with Lisa. She thinks that Whitney was the one to lie. Da, 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 da. They're going to go pick up Heather. They said they're going to Wendy's. Y'all know where Wendy's is at? I'm like, now Wendy's. I know who the hell is Wendy? Is she gonna be on the show? Who is that? Girl, they going to Wendy's, the actual fast food restaurant. I said, get, girl, get away from me. I'm not mad at it, but it was the most random thing in the world. When they said Wendy's, I thought it was a cast member, a friend of the show, somebody else that was about to be added to the damn cast. Girl, y'all going to down, y'all going down there to get a faux for faux and a junior bacon cheeseburger. Child, I feel like Heather go down there so many times. Girl, she done gave it an acronym. She had to go look up JBC. I was like, girl, JB, what the junior bacon cheese girl i said oh god yeah that was the most randomest scene i've ever seen in my life girl i'm not even gonna hold you girl anyway okay so they pick up heather try they riding in the in the range girl down the windows girl getting them a foe for foe okay and they're in the car still recapping okay the night before after lisa and whitney got into got into it okay got into it went back and forth and forth and back girl okay and whitney was like you know, you want the heel Whitney, here's the heel Whitney, you know, just doing the things. Now, here's here's my opinion real quick, okay? I do believe that two things can be right at the same time, okay? Actually, I missed something. I forgot Angie K called while Lisa and Bronwyn was in the car together. I forgot to say that. Angie wanted to meet up with Lisa to basically talk through some things because she didn't like how it ended the night before, okay? So shout out to Angie, shout out to Lisa, we about to keep going, okay? Now, Bronwyn is in the car basically saying how Whitney yelling and cussing and all this other stuff was trite. Now, mind you, the word trite is not a compliment, love, okay? It means overused, it means overdone, it means tired, raggedy, rude, delayed. Girl, we done seen this before, okay? That's what that means. And so when she was laughing about how Whitney, you wanna see the hill, Whitney? Girl, she called what you said trite and basically said that it sounded like you rehearsed that in the, in the mirror, okay? So Heather was like, uh-uh, I've seen this before, okay? I'm not going to be going, going along with nobody who is ready to jump on somebody who doesn't even know who they're talking about, okay? So I'm with Heather. She wasn't tripping. I was like, okay, you got a lot to say about this girl that you don't know. Now, Bronwyn, again, I like you. I really do. I really, truly do. I don't have no problem with you. But I... But I <laughs> My radar, okay, my uh, 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 is going off. It really is, okay. And so it was with Heather. I was like, yeah, girl, y'all know that girl like that. Don't be talking about it. Like, now, I can talk about my friend, but you can't talk about my friend, okay? No, for real. Anyway, okay. So 
what else is happening? Oh, Meredith. What's going on with Meredith? Yeah, now, now, now. Oh, yeah. Oh, Mary. Wait, real quick. Y'all remember 227? Mary. Mary. What do you say? Mary. That's how I'm going to do it. Anyway, okay. So, Mary, all right. Now, she's with her son, girl. I, lo I love Mary. When I tell you, Mary had me rolling the first, the premiere episode. Mary, girl, if y'all go with me, girl, she had me rolling for my life. I really was screaming in the house. I really was. But Mary, girl, sweep around, sweep around your own front door, love. Girl, you raising a bomb, girl. Your son ain't in school. He ain't got no job. He begging you for money, girl. And he over the age of 18. I know he about 2021, maybe even 22, girl. If he any older than that, girl, you really raising a bum, girl. Mm. Mary is one of the women that I cannot stand who basically turn their sons into their brother, boyfriend, husband, girl. Ugh, so gross. So, listen, the way that Mary don't have no room to talk about nobody, and, and, and don't get me wrong, I love when Mary be going on <laughs> or be coming for them girls next, but Mary be reading them girls down and they do not know how to they don't, have, they don't know how to say nothing back to her. But, baby, Mary, you're going to reach the right one on the wrong day or the wrong one on the right day. However you want to interpret that love. Anyway, okay, let's move on. So Lisa and Angie, right? Because Angie had called her earlier when she was with, when Lisa was with Brownwin, okay? Now, they sit down at the table. And you know Lisa want to act like, child, Lisa. Okay, here's the thing. Two things can be true, okay? Was Angie dead ass wrong for going back to tell Whitney what Lisa said? Yes, she was. She was dead ass wrong. Now, I also, because we're on reality TV, girl, whatever the hell you say, whatever the hell them cameras pick up, girl, it's also going to be broadcasted on damn TV. So Whitney was going to hear that shit either way, okay? But it didn't need to come from Angie. So I will say that Lisa is correct in her being upset about that part. Now, what I really need Lisa to understand is that, girl, if multiple people are coming to you to say that you don't listen, that you don't, you know, you you prefer, you don't want nobody to tell you the truth about nothing and that you want things to be your way, then girl, honey, love, you might want to listen to them. And girl, it is 2024. We cannot continue to be going on with this. This is who I am. Take it or leave it, girl. We too goddamn old for that shit, girl. Listen, it's called evolution, okay? It's called growing up. All right. So if you surround yourself around people who tell you who you tell you things to help you grow and enrich your character. Girl, ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Okay, now you ain't got to take everything. My grandma used to say, eat the fish and spit the bones out. That's what it's called, okay? But you still eat the fish, all right? It's good for you, all right? It's nutritious. That's what they say. You eat the fish and you spit the bones out. You ain't got to take everything everybody's saying. But girl, if multiple people saying the same thing, and they, uh, girl, everybody ain't conspiring against you, mama. So, there was something that Lisa said. She was like, I feel like Angie isn't listening to me. She's not listening to understand. I said, well, Lisa, you're doing the same damn thing. You over-talking Angie. She can't get a word in. She's trying to say, hey, Lisa, okay, everybody ain't mad about it. Everybody ain't wrong, okay? Can you listen to what somebody else is saying instead of over-talking them and carrying on like you do? Girl, Lisa was not hearing for I said, I do not like people like that. That can't listen to, you know, here's the thing. If it's a stranger that's coming up off the street telling you some old foolishness, baby, I don't know nothing about you. You don't know nothing about me. Ain't nothing you can tell me that's going to make me flinch, okay? But if it's somebody that I know that has dedicated time and effort to being my friend, okay, then, girl, why would I not listen to what they have to say about me? Because I feel like they have time invested in me. And for Lisa to not want to listen to none of her friends, girl, you want a yes person, okay? But again, I'll say from this whole entire scene, I was really upset with Lisa not wanting to listen, but I also was disappointed with Angie for not apologizing and owning up to girl. Whatever you said, Whitney, didn't need to come from your mouth, girl, okay? It didn't need to come from you. So Lisa gets mad. She walks up. She says, you know what? Well, we can continue this conversation another time. I said, well, girl, you ain't have to get up. We actually could have talked about it right here, but you know what, Lisa, I don't want to hear nothing. Y'all y'all had them family members who you be trying to tell them about stuff, and girl, they don't want to hear nothing. They want to just do what they want to do, all right? And then you like, well, damn. <laughs> now, they, they ain't going to speak to me for about a two, good two, three months because I done said something they don't want to hear, all right? Anyway, again, Lisa, I think you need to grow up. I also feel like Andrew was wrong, but I also feel like Lisa need to grow the hell up, all right? We get the Bronwyn and her family, okay? Now, Bronwyn. Girl, for all the fashion that you wear, girl, your house. Girl, that house, girl. Now, I know you said you just got Gwen over there, who was your daughter from another relationship that didn't work out. 
girl, why I thought it was a toddler room that they was walking into. I was like, what is, you know, them ABC one, two, three rugs that be on the ground <laughs> when you walk into the toddler rooms. That's what I thought was down the brown was house. I'm like, girl, what the hell is this? Red light, green light, yellow light, all of her furniture. She had a red couch, a yellow couch, a, a green couch. Girl, what is this a kindergarten room? Girl, what is going? It's too many colors, girl. And don't get me wrong, I love colors. I'm not a I'm not a muted girl. I'm not well, maybe I am. My my living room theme is brown. I have earth tones. So it's browns, greens, blues, whites. Yeah, maybe I am a maybe I am an earth tone girl in my living room specifically. But girl, she had entirely too many damn colors for me, girl. It was giving kindergarten classroom, girl. I could not do it. It's like, oh girl, you it's too busy in here, girl. You need to mute some of this, girl. Anyway, so she got her decorator coming over. I said, Praise the Lord, girl. Now this she tell us a little bit about how her and her husband Todd ended up meeting. She worked, I believe, in finance or something like that in San Francisco or something like that. Girl, I don't know. Obviously, it was male-dominated because she wanted to let us know that her whole, all her co-workers were men. And she tells her, she's telling us about the story about how her telling her meeting Todd at some networking event, I think it was, and he gave her, or he asked for her email. She went back to go tell her co-workers, and it was like, he trying to hit on you. She was like, no, I thought he was trying to professionally mentor me. He was like, no, he probably old as hell, and so all he knows is email. Girl, as soon as she said he asked for my email, I was like, love. It's because he don't know how to text. So that's, that's really what I thought. I was like, girl, it's just because he don't know how to text. <laughs> that's so nasty to me. Really? Okay. And here's the thing, because I know the last time I said that somebody was in a relationship with somebody who was entirely too old for them. Yeah, the bias coming out. Sorry. I, I There was a relationship. I can't remember what reality TV show it was where the man was entirely her senior, like years, decades, her senior. OK. And I was like, that's so damn nasty. I still feel that way. I do. I just I don't see the value in dating somebody who is who in three times your age, okay? Because that's, you're going to be a dependent. They're, at some point, you're going to be a dependent to them and they're going to be a dependent to you at some point in a relationship. And I just, let me hush. Just say, I'm going to just keep going. <laughs> Let's keep going. All right, now Heather and Whitney. Now, I like Heather. I'm starting to like Heather. I see Heather as kind of like a, um, Oh, she's just kind of quirky, kind of fun. She don't really hold a grudge, but she loyal. That's what I like about Heather. I can tell Heather is loyal, okay? So Whitney is talking about the, the night before with Heather. And Heather said, I feel like we kind of ganged up on you. Whitney felt like she was ganged up on. And essentially she was, because everybody and their mama was basically airing out their grievances with her. But I do feel like she was holding her own. I ain't even gonna hold you, okay? She was fighting y'all off. She really was. Now, I don't, do I think... I do I have an opinion on this? No, oh, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm gonna keep watching, but I do feel like Whitney owes people an apology. I really do, especially if this is what she has said about everybody. Okay, and I haven't watched all the seasons, so I do not know. Okay, but I will say I do feel like if Whitney wants to move on, and part of her moving on needs to be her giving apologies to people who feel like she has wronged. Okay, now I forgot about Meredith's um little segment. She's getting a bat mitzvah. That's it. The end. I mean, shout out to Meredith, girl. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Wonderful for you, love. I don't, I don't know. I don't have nothing else to say about that. Oh, Whitney and Heather, they're planning. One is planning a team building activity. Heather is planning a team building activity. And then Whitney wants to try to invite all the girls at the team building activity to come to Milwaukee, Wisconsin with her. Because her drag queen friend has a bar that's opening up and she's going to be hosting a drag show. So that's going to be cute. Now, I'm trying to, oh, Heather in a confessional talks about how Bronwyn basically is giving Two-Face because Whitney at the store where she was with, at Heather, with Heather, Whitney was like, you know, I love Bronwyn because she is real and da-da-da-da. And Heather was like, the Bronwyn who was talking about you like a child? Okay, girl. But she ain't say nothing then, but it does come back up. So let's, let's, let's keep going. Now, what I am skipping, because there was some parts where I was like, okay, this is cute, but I don't, 
care about talking about it. Meredith in the kitchen talking to her daughter, complaining about Whitney. Girl, I don't care about this. And then bath bombs. If I hear another bath bomb. Girl, do you know how many damn people done came up with bath bombs? She act like she the one that invented the shit. No, please. Heather playing pickleball with Britney. Oh, girl, Britney find new and inventive ways to embarrass her damn self on TV. We about to get into it. Angie and Brownwin. Uh, Brownwin goes to get her hair done. Now, this is where Brownwin says something that I was just kind of like, hmm, okay. So, to Angie, right, she is telling her that, you know, I feel like Whitney has some really great points and Whitney was right in what she had to say. But, eh, 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 Brownwin. Bronwyn, because I thought for sure that you told Lisa that you felt like she was right, okay? Then Bronwyn has the nerve to tell Angie, or in the confessional, she says to us that she doesn't really do female relationships. And y'all already know how that works out, okay? It's always the ones that be talking about, oh, I don't really like to do a whole lot of wi- wi- friendships with women. Women act different. We just be different. Y'all too much drama. Y'all already know how that works out with those types of women. Okay, need I say more? I don't, okay? So I got my good eye on Bronwyn, girl. Uh, 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 okay? I don't, I don't know about all that. Now we get to this team building. Girl, they walk in the tightrope, girl. Would I do it? Uh, I don't know. Now would I zip line? Yes, but that's quick. You, you know, quickly moving through. Doing that, girl, I'm slow. And I got to hold on and try to, no, ma'am, I don't know if I can do that. That's not fast enough. Please zip me across the thing. In a couple seconds, so I can move on. Girl, I'm not trying to take my time up in the sky like that, girl. My mind getting moving and wandering and carrying on. Girl, I don't got time for that. No, ma'am. All right, so we let's get to the meat and potatoes, girl. They sit down for lunch, okay? Now, child, Brittany get her... Brittany get her ass up to my... Jared is playing me. He finally me and said that me and him are going to be together. And everybody was like, yeah, okay. And he even posted it on social media. And I know that's not a big thing for everybody, but that's a big deal for me. So you like, hey, girl. Now, nah, me, I'm I'm sad. I'm like, girl, I know you're not talking about you being with this man. Y'all broke up 16 damn times and he just not claiming you. So y'all wasn't breaking up. He was just leaving your ass with somebody else. You are a placeholder. That's really what it is. So then they, she shows a picture around and it says at Costco with my best friend. Y'all be weak in the knees. Stand up. Stand up. Somebody help Brittany. Somebody get Brittany. Somebody get Brit- Brittany. 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 Love. Honey. Be- girl. You know what? I don't have time to read you down. I will next next episode. I will. Brittany. You know, I'm not even talking about you because your self-esteem, your self-esteem is already low, clearly, okay? So I'm not even to talk about you like a dog. But love, where is your self-esteem, okay? Where is your self-esteem, baby? He is not claiming you, girl, okay? He just posted that him and his friend went to the Costco. That is the most unromantic, unassuming. And she knows it. The thing about it is she knows that it ain't shit either. She knows. But this is a little breadcrumb he done gave her, so she going to take whatever she can get. Said, baby, fuck Jared, okay? You holding on to this motherfucker because of his name. That's it. He ain't no good to you. He treats you bad. And from the way Whitney talk about it, you more into him than he is into you. And, girl, that is a very dangerous combination when you when you a woman. Ooh, girl, let me tell you something, okay? I may not look as old as I am. I, and I'm never going to tell y'all how old I really am. <laughs> but one thing I've learned in all the years that I have been on this earth, bitch, don't you never let no nigga like you. Don't you never like no nigga more than a nigga like you. I'm going to tell you right now, that's a recipe for disaster, girl. When I tell you, you be embarrassed. When you embarrassed. When you fighting for your life. Okay, when you hanging on by your edges. Bitch, that's the, that could be the situation that you in with a nigga when you like the nigga but more than a nigga like you, girl. No, ma'am. Mm-mm. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No ham. No pam. No tanky. Don't you ever do that shit. Oh, girl. I got. Oh, my blood started boiling. All right, let's move on now. Girl, marry rude ass. I'm married to my. Don't, we don't care about that shit. <laughs> now, am I? <laughs> now, am I mad about it? No. Okay, I'm not mad. But marry, 
Girl, you knew that was rude, girl. You ain't have to be rude. She was like, girl, I don't care about that bullshit, girl. Shut your ass up, dummy. Hell no, nah, she ain't say all that, but I mean, you could insert whatever you wanted to in that, okay? So anyway, here go uh, Brittany. Oh my God, Mary, that's rude. That is so rude. Well, girl, listen. So they get to going forth and back and back and forth. And Brown one girl, she want to jump into my house. Brittany been crazy and chaotic, chaotic from the jump and all this other stuff. And I'm like, oh, now, wait a minute. Now, let I thought we was trying to have a, a team building, a time of love and connection, okay? Heather was like, I don't like the way they're handling my friends. So I'm going to jump up in here, right? So she was like, okay, well, if you need, if Brittany need to get her words together, Brown, when you need to get your words together, because, girl, the way you was talking about Whitney, like a raggedy, tired-ass, beat-up dog, okay? But then you go around in her, smile on her face. Now, here's the thing. The way that Brown one was able to wiggle or wriggle up out of that thing. So Lisa was like, oh, no, I just felt like she, she wasn't talking about Whitney. She was just saying, you know, she has a certain way of talking. I was like, oh, girl. And Brown one said that. She was like, damn, Lisa, you're not defending me or nothing. And Heather was like, well, you, the way you talked about Brown one, it wasn't. And I said, now, in my mind, I'm like, Heather. You're absolutely correct. You, your senses picked up on the bullshit, but this was not the time for you to be doing it because you didn't have enough evidence. That's what it is, right? So I got my good eye on Bronwyn. I still like her, right? But I, I wouldn't throw this out. I wouldn't make a determination about her character until I got a little bit more evidence. See, Heather threw that thing out there way too much and it blew up in her face. And it ended up coming back where Whitney was like, oh my God, Heather's blowing this out of proportion. So Heather looking crazy, although I do believe Heather was right. Feel like Heather had a little inkling. And I was like, Heather, I'm with your inkling, girl. I feel what you're saying, okay? But she threw it out there too, too soon, okay? That's the big joke. You throw it out the big joker in the first go round? No, ma'am. I mean, unless you ain't got no spades or nothing. No, ma'am. Don't throw out the big joke. Not too fast. Not too fast. Not too fast. Okay? Use that for other times. Use that for other things. Okay? Anyway, I just didn't like that. So, that basically fizzled and made Heather look like Boo Boo the Fool. Okay? And then, now, Brown would probably got a little side eye for Heather. All right? Now, Whitney jumps in and then Lisa got to get in. Girl, they going back and forth and forth and back and carrying on. Whitney finally apologizes. Okay? Meredith feeling some type of way that Whitney got an apology or Whitney gave an apology to Lisa, but not giving one to Meredith. She's like, girl, Meredith, girl. I'm not saying that Meredith don't deserve an apology. Just like, girl, let, let, can we do one thing after another? Like, one thing after the other, mama, please. Okay. Anyway, so Whitney says, all right, well, we're going to bury the hatchet. I'm inviting everybody to Milwaukee. Trixie is having, Tris, Tris, somebody, Trixie, Trixie, I don't remember the name. They having a, they going to do a thing over there in the thing, okay? And we want y'all to come. And girl, I did some research at our hotel, got a little bath. We were in a private jet. Meredith being a stank ass over there. I don't think I'm going to go. And I don't want to go with Whitney. Now, y'all get down in the comments and tell me if it was that serious what Whitney did to Meredith, apparently. Was it that bad? I don't know. Anyway, let's, let's, let, I'm wrapping up. I'm, I'm wrapping it up. That's all I got to say because y'all, I got to go. Anyway. Y'all, let's quickly get into the premiere episode. First of all, Mary is hell, funny as hell. Funny as, girl, I was dead. Love Ronwin. Ron, I already said that. But girl, why the hell she had that damn, girl, why that damn jacket? Why that damn coat look like the, the heart-shaped monster girl from Looney Tunes? I was like, girl, I know it's fashion, but girl, this shit is ugly. I'm just, I'm a, it's not cute. I don't like it. I do not like it, okay? What else is going on? Girl, when Mary said that Britney, I, I know she put bread in her bag recently because kids don't have purses. I was... My marriage and my life. <laughs> no, I... Mary, where is your good sense? Okay, where is the good sense guy gave a Billy Goat? Mary ain't got now. See, Mary, Mary don't play, girl. She is the shade assassin, girl, and I'm here a for it, girl. She is hilarious to moi, okay? What else is going on on the first episode? Girl, just it just it just started off with a bang. The editing was excellent. Okay, they didn't do all this fake backstory or anything like that. They just kind of let the the party play out, and then they started to kind of feed us backstories about everybody out throughout, and it flowed naturally. The premiere episode was every. It was really really good. Girl, I liked it so much that I I, I wanted to watch it again back to back, and I never girl I have not done that since. Girl, season five, season six of Real Housewives of Atlanta, girl. Married to Medicine Days. I haven't done one of, ooh, I have to watch this again. I did, I have not done that. And not, so I have to take notes. 
but girl i'm watching this again because it was just pure entertainment i girl yes i'm hoping that this season will be very good this is my first time watching that salt lake city wives girl i'm very much venturing into the white house wives world i'm liking it because i'm seeing friendships right i'm seeing real friendships people who really know each other and i'm seeing the dynamics between all of the friendships and how, how just friendship and doing friendship as an adult is very hard so it's very it's interesting to me to watch these women navigate the friendship space the way that they do so anyway i'm getting into it y'all get in the comments let me know what you think about the episode don't forget to like this video before you leave it helps me out okay y'all already know the goal on the road to 10k don't forget to like this video get in the comments subscribe to the channel if you haven't already all right let me know what you think i'll see you guys in the next one take care just say you Say it. I want it all night. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I want it all night. Say it.